yeah so that's that and we're gonna do this right now oh so we're moving on to the final huh really Hey guys, so I am back with commentary. Well, that was uh, just a very bad mistake on my part with by not checking my mic before I recorded and yeah. Cost three whole videos to uh, not have commentary. But alas, we are here and we will be doing uh, the the two abnormalities. I haven't had the chance to get my uh, get the key pages for the Hana Association uh, just yet, but hopefully I will get that soon, sooner than later. And yeah, let's see. So we're gonna we're gonna just run our. Uh, we're gonna run our tried and tested team here. Very, very standard, very, hopefully very good team. Uh, we're gonna go here and then maybe the realization is that right after this, I can do the realization. But I'm gonna do these two first, and then see what happens. Of course, for the invitations, uh, the general, uh, not general reception, but like the reception scene, uh, I do want to get the key pages, uh, the character key pages for the Hana Association before I continue, uh, before I move on to the next stages. Yeah, so that's that, and we're gonna do this right now. Oh, so we're moving on to the final. Huh? Really? I I okay. I heard that these two are very difficult, so I guess I'll take this video to just explore what this is all about before I probably have to try it again. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think I think I will go for it. What do I have here? The emotion level up thing? Four trigrams. Okay, I'm gonna go for this since B Bina is ranged. Yeah, yeah, all of these are ranged. Um, maybe if I go, it's it's there a. a Passive abilities ranged. Hmm. Okay, I think this is good enough. Okay. I will try it. I didn't. I didn't realize this was the final episode. But sure, let's try it. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll see what uh, what is gonna ca go. Uh, what is gonna be the case here? But if we fail, we fail. Uh, I'm expecting to fail. But if we cannot fail, then that is the better outcome. But yeah. Roland, do you know of the being Angela was modeled after? Honey. 
Nope, she never really told me about who she was based on, and I didn't really want to bother asking further. Angela was created in the image of a person named Carmen. She was one who sought to change the city. Really? Wow. Okay, that's a twist. Hang on, what? You mean the Carmen who recruited people for her quest to cure humanity? She strove to create a world without conflict. To elaborate, her idea of utopia was one in which people did not harm each other and could mutually understand. Right? She dreamed of a world where people could dream. Alas, she could never reach that ideal herself, tragically. The fruit of her research could only be born after she sacrificed her life for it. And the head didn't miss that the prime opportunity to strike? Of course, her cause was an important offense. Offense. Even though that was not at all. Angela was meant to be a substitute of Carmen. The one who created Angela and carried out the plan. And the one I am keeping an, an eye on, he was the same type of individual as I. He merely shouldered the burden of completing ta the task the one he loved left behind. He never pursued any great cause in a true sense. He was frail, yet could not be understood anymore, but be understood by anyone. It may be that he desperately longed for understanding from another being for that reason. So you're saying Angela was made to fill the carbon side's hole in his heart? The forbidden endeavor to create someone to look over his fragile self. A cocktail of irony and lingering attachment, self-loathing and insanity. The irony of the irony of codependency, where the two gravely needed each other, but could never be next to one another. The abiding affection for Carmen that compelled him to create a mechanical copy of her, even though there was no real need for such resemblance. The result ended up resembling him more than Carmen. Funnily enough. The self-contempt that stemmed from countless contradictions and regrets, and the insanity of neglecting Angela to suffer for nigh eternity when she was capable of having a mind that is no different from humans. Beautiful, is it not? <laughs> yep, yeah, uh, yeah. There is some... There is some like uh, violence, uh, beauty in that violence, and sometimes it's very disturbing. But there is an aesthetic aspect to it. It's a very philosophical uh, point of view. Beautiful my ass, he was an absolute top of the range nutcase if what you said is true. Yet, he was a beacon of virtue for some. There is no such thing as good in this world, however. There is, there is only what is perceived as such. It is not up to the individual to dare make universal judgment. Yeah, like, the concept of good and evil is very point of view based because I mean like in the point of view of someone like um, like if it's like having a war evil like what, what is considered evil really uh, if like people are killing other people like their motives and all that stuff like gets taken into consideration. Uh, what is their motive? Like, why are they killing people? Uh, it's 
just the act of killing people, other people bad, or is your motive good? You're like sometimes your self defense. You're sometimes you're like trying to uh, save someone, and then you killed the other person. Is that like that's considered good? But but you killed someone. You still kill someone. Is that like? It it's that just it's just the concept of the killing good, or it's that does that depend on what you believe in and what the your uh, what your stance of the situation is. So so yes, it's all very dependent on the individual and like war, like we say that. This is very political, but we say that uh, the yeah, I don't want to offend anyone here, but we, like we say that uh, Chinese communi communism, uh, the Chinese Party, is quote unquote bad. But I mean, the citizens there are living a fine life. Life the Everyone is like it's not. No one is really going. Uh, at least all of the like, like they are trying to make everyone not go hungry, and it's like only these very small cases where uh, this vill these villages, small villages, are getting going hungry, but the government still like providing food for them. Meanwhile, the, and that is portrayed in the into the Western audience as like, oh, look at what the CPP is is doing, uh, 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 the or the CCP is doing, and then the like, oh, it's like they're not doing very well, or a very good job, and then that's portraying a very bad image to the Western audience. But then we look at. U.S. and Canada, there are still like homeless people. There are like very these uh, not not uh, the unemployment rate, the like no um, minimum people living below the minimum uh, wage like limits. Like everybody is. There are still a lot of people that are suffering as well. And there's also the racism issue. The like all a lot of issues. And I mean. You at this rate, you're just the pot is calling the kettle black. It's everybody. It's uh, it's the same, and it's very political stance to blame the CCP for what they are doing, and then uh, having everyone agree that they're quote unquote bad. But in actuality, it's just a very political thing, rather than like they're not actually bad, but. But the government, the Western, the U.S. or Canadian government, they they have something to gain from it. That's why it's like they have something to gain from the uh, the citizens looking at China as a bad character, and then they want this negative emotion towards them, and then. They have something, and then they they promote their own nationalism, nationalism or patriotic views of, and then people are more loyal to the to Canadian or U.S. government, the country or or the country itself. Yeah, so it's very like subjective view, and. Behind the scenes, there's a whole, whole like level of just, <laughs> just very uh, deep things that are going on. If you don't think about it, you just mindlessly accept. It, it can be detrimental. Right, and I believe he and, and I bet he was a spawn of evil to others. Humans are bound to view the world while carrying certain things on their backs. You are no exception. You are no exception, of course. 
Never having had the chance to see my parents, I grew up in the hands of an old woman's back streets. And I was left alone when she was gone not too long after. Looking for a way to make a living for myself, I jumped into the world of fixers at a young age. I had my grand to thank for that, since she taught me how to survive as a fixer before she left. I spent all my time dealing with the requests and errands for others rather than doing anything for myself. In time, I gra gradually forgot. Was there anything that I could do for myself? I thought as I watched the naked and explicit facets of the city. Should I settle for a life where I won't lack for anything crucial? Will I be happy if I live in the nest? It was when the days of smoke-filled skies and the scent of humans were nearing their end. Freak off. This one's mine to kill. Salvador. You're one snappish kid, aren't you? Wearing an odd mask, too. I said, frick off. Huh. Try, look, try looking at what's in front of you for once. You'll miss the most important thing if you're always looking back. Don't you know? You're not getting any thanks from me. I wasn't expecting any. And I'm still getting credit for this one's head. What is a young green sprout like you doing here anyway? Partaking in this war? It's none of your business. But you're here for the migration permit to the nest. Are you here for that too, old fart? I'm a nest resident at birth, so I don't quite need that. What the hell are you here for then? Are you sure and are ignorant of the world, kid? Take a look. A badge of I-Corp's nest. An entire association has been hired, you see. I frankly don't know what we're fighting for. This smoke admittedly, admittedly made the city a nasty mess, I'll give you that. But they won't tell us anything beyond that. All we ought to do is go and kill whoever we are ordered to kill. Such are the principles of the fixers, and this city as a whole. Say, kid, how many kills have you scored in this war until now? 23. Think your life is worth more than 23 people? No. All I did was a strike at them with my sword so I could live. My life probably isn't worth anything more than one. And yet, some higher-ups believe that a handful of this smoke is worth more than 10,000 lives, tens of thousands of lives. What, what is this smoke all about? Watch, that's the source of the smoke. Downright hideous, yet expected. You vomit with your mask on? <laughs> Filthy thought. Made me queasy as well. What is that thing? You better get used to this kind of scenery. The singularities that keep the city running all have a nasty truth or two hidden from... A, a nasty truth or two hidden from the public eye. Well, we'll be subjected to amnestic treatment now that we've seen this, though this disgust won't go away entirely. What? This was behind this was was behind the splendor of the city. The city could be in motion thanks to this crap. You learned a you learned a valuable lesson today, Tid. I don't exactly remember the source of the smoke I witnessed that day. But I can't forget the dreadful image of my, what makes this city a prosperous place. The, the sickening world itself. 
They don't realize that their convenience is built on the sacrifice of numerous others. They wouldn't, they wouldn't even want to know. After the war, I, bled, I blended back into the city and kept working as a fixer. Numerous people came and went in my life. Countless crises and hardships later, all that remained by my side were the 12 fixers in Charles' office. Get that thing out of my face! Angelica. Yeesh, that's a nasty sleeping habit you have there, mister. I just nodded off for a moment, that's all. What are you? Oh, you must be the new one. You know how everyone else who took this request died awful death, right? Why should I begrudge it? Since during the hours when my soul crushed the depths of my heart, it was seated there beside me? Great. I get to work with a sickle. What the? It's a passage from a poem I like. It helps me accept this the agony rather than suffer trying to shake it off. Just what kind of augmentation did you get to be so strong? You almost crushed the back of my skull. Oh, oh, is that? Is she the her? Uh, I mean, is she his uh, wife later on? Is this how they met? Okay, I see. I assume that that's the case. You aren't any less of a sickle if I'm being honest, mister. I heard you keep that mask on all, at all times like a creepy psycho. That said, I also heard you're quite skilled. Say, mister, why don't you take your mask off anyway? Don't pry. We're both grade one. Let's not just cross each other's lines. You know the unspoken rules? No, I don't, mister. Stop with that, Mr. Cram. It's making me feel awkward. The documents say you're older than me, too. And I swear I'm gonna pay you back for hitting me twice before the contract with Charles' office ended. So you'd better be prepared. You mean three times, my good Mr. Sir? Huh? But I could have sworn I would got hit twice. And then she hit him again. You piece of. I first met Angelica while taking on a case concerning a star of the city. It's pretty much unavoidable to talk with co-workers on a long-term mission. Perhaps I should have kept my silence. Was it because of all my colleagues? No, all the people I who died so early and suddenly became before I could even call them colleagues. That I grew a yearning for something more? Why did I bother opening up to her? I was from the outskirts. To be precise, I was a test subject in a week, apparently. And when they were done experimenting with me, they dumped me in the outskirts. I don't really remember what kind of experiments I went through, but the horrible feeling still persisted. Wow. How unfortunate. You're cold, mister. It's just too banal. Yeah, I guess it really is a cliche story when you put it that way. What about you? Tell me something more about your mask. Focus on work. I started wearing a mask following my grand's advice. Her reason was that if, as a fixer, it's important to not let your potential enemies remember your face, if I remember correctly. But now I had to keep my mask on for another reason. I couldn't stand to take it off. 
I couldn't stand to be open with a clear conscience in this city. The mask became my own enclosed world. I couldn't leave. Please don't take him to that room. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything. Hmm. Right. Okay, so she's having flashbacks. So please leave my brother be. Please let him go. Dozing off in the middle of a mission, aren't you? I don't think you're the one to cri criticize anyone else's sleeping habits, hmm? Hey, hold on, that hurt too much. I still have two more hits to go. And wow, you're just dropping your courtesy because you're hurt. I got a little agitated. Sorry, mister. My childhood must have come back to me while I was asleep. You told me about it before. The part about you having a brother is new to me, though. What about you, Roland? It's about time you told something about yourself. I participated in the smoke war. And the an accurate smoke covered the whole city for a while thanks to that war. Yep, and I, and I saw the source of the smoke with my own two eyes. I can't remember what it was anymore, but I still have a feeling that I witnessed something I shouldn't have to this day. The feeling that I'm taking part in something no better than... And the feeling that I'm taking part in something no better than feeling that disgusting origin. It's like something is boiling within me. Copious amounts of agony surround surrounded the city. Maybe the reason you're always wearing that mask is... Yep. Yep, she's not wrong. Heads up. The target is, a, is approaching your location. Back to work. We're almost done with this long mission. The target Angelica and I were after was called Blood Red Knight. She employed slight trickery to kidnap people from the back streets and the nest alike. The victims were later found in the back streets as corpses. Animated corpses. The bodies are un are empty inside. I have no idea how they are able to move. But they kept walking anyway. They endlessly crave for fresh things, as if they feel their empty bodies. She was only designated as a star of the city so quickly because the nest saw direct harm, I bet. They were right at her bedroom at long last. So many people died on the way here. You and I managed to survive it though. Should we consider that lucky? Or unlucky, mister. Check this out. How many people did it take to make everything here? I'm guessing at least 3,000 folks. Wow, okay. Elena. It's a boudoir of 4,172 people if you want the exact number. You must have made quite a bit of effort to, to catch me, seeing as you've come all the way here. Sure, I still have. Took two damn years to track you down. The strings decorating this room are all human blood vessels. She's been kidnapping people at random and extracting all the wings from their bodies. The things we deal we dealt with on our way here. The things we dealt, the things we dealt with on our way here were the shells you took all the wings out of, as I expected. They were just crude contraptions of flesh lacking their own will, unfortunately. That wasn't what I was looking for. I was hoping for ones whose wings were flowing with blood that's a little more enticing. Whatever your sentiment is, your little game ends now. 
Tonight, a star of the city shall fall. Fall. She's rather a persistent opponent. We're almost there. Hey, watch your back. Is that how she died? Mm. What? No. Mm. Huh? No. You didn't have to. So sweet. Damn bitch. This won't be the last you see of me. Blood red night. The night shall fall once again someday. Shut up and die. People try not to care about the suffering of others. They only give a few dry words of consolation. They never wish to truly understand each other's pain. But Angelica was different. She wanted to learn more about the pain I was bearing. My agony is abstract and enormous. Could you really understand me? Hey! Angelica, can you hear me? You are like those who never left this sad fireside corner of my poor black heart. It's finally over. Good work, mister. Keep it together. Hey, you can't just die like this. I can't have you die because of me. Don't close your eyes. Stay with me. Cut it out, you dope. I'm not dead yet. What? I was just trying to lie flat and rest a bit. And then you almost beat me to death. Thank goodness. Are you actually relieved or what? It's hard to tell what you're thinking behind that mask, mister. I'm wearing this mask because I don't want to show my face to anyone. I was not proud to face the, ab the abominable, abominable deeds of the city I'm contributing to. I don't want my contorting face to be seen. I don't have the confidence to show myself to anyone. Sometimes, I think... If you can kill so many people nonchalantly just because associations and offices order us to, excusing it as part of our work, then we could be killed by someone with the same kind of excuses. Even if we were to get murdered in the city one day, we wouldn't be able to make any complaints about it. That's what makes me scared. And he took his mask off. It's like a metaphor for him opening up to uh, Angelica. Yep, that's a problematic face, alright. I guess you really were worried but for me though. It's bearable to look at. My face. It hurts. I don't get why you care so much about all the older problems in this city like that's your burden. That's that, and this is this, you know? Ah, uh, I get it. <laughs> he inherited this quote from Angelica. That's why he always likes to use this quote. That's that, and this is this. Yeah, I guess that's how the city is. The person who broke into my world. The person who then became the new foundation of my world. She showed me the way to turn away from the city's agonies even without my mask. You may have been a good person, but I would not consider you a wise one. You heard about the pain I was bearing and taught me how to turn a blind eye to it. You said you embraced the pain, but you only pretended to do so. 
I'm but one of the men who play the tunes of the apocalypse in the abyss. Calm now. What? Once upon a time, three happy birds lived in a lush forest. Okay. Oh my god, we're targeting Big Bird already? <laughs> Starting with the first scene, you flex a random assistant librarian with enchanted every three scenes. Wait, how, how, how did you... How, how did we <laughs> um, counter that again by hitting? Starting with the third scene, use the combat page Darkness every three scenes. Each time an ally is defeated, permanently gain 5 feeble and disarm. Takes no physical damage when hit by allies. Oh my god. Well, 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 um, <laughs> How did I do Big Bird before? I don't remember how I did Big Bird before. Do one of these. Fairy. Can I rush this guy down? I don't think so. Let me just do this. What is this? Well, well, well. More librarians are affected with subsequent occurrences? Wait a minute. Oh my god. The fuck? Question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> Oh, I have the eye here as well. Oh, 
Oh, I can't even use this on my own. Really? How? Don't know. I think it. Uh, I. Not sure. Oh, I need to... Man, this sucks. This just sucks a lot. I feel like I have to redo this fight like like right now. Okay, one is down. It says inflict darkness, but what is darkness? WTF Wait, okay, there is feeble and disarm. So there is feeble. So technically this will be 10 damage. Go guarding instead.
here and here. Hey, fifteen. It still did. It's doing fifteen. Weight of Sin Let's go here Unaffected by power related effects I'm, I don't I don't understand one two three four I can't switch I can waste the um I'm I'm wondering like in this case I can just waste right I can just waste this guy's uh, uh what would you like the the counter dice but I <laughs> don't I I still don't understand this how do I how the hell? <laughs> I feel like they they just removed what Big Bird it's with the weakness of the Big Bird. Oh wait, no. But if it's twenty minus twenty, then maybe it does work. I don't know. That's not. Didn't get weakness. He 
he his this counter dice didn't uh, get affected by his weakness or his uh his power decrease didn't affect that. Oh, oh, because of the darkness. Oh, I see, I see. After... I think judgment is good. Okay. Well, let's do this. Now, now it works. But, uh... Let's do this. This. And this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, 7, that is more than 7 hits. Okay. Right, darkness... What's the problem? Big Bird decided to watch over the, for Big Bird's eyes can see. Alright. Um. Okay. If the character takes damage, inflicts punishy on the attacker. Uh, right. In punishment mode, the number of speed dice increases to 5 for one scene and uses special combat page against the character that attacked him last. Also, all stagger damage resistances change to fatal. When Roland is not in punishment mode, gain vigilance every two scenes and switch between attack and defense mode on each scene. When Roland is in punishment mode, enter attack mode for the scene. Prioritizes targeting staggered characters. Well, yeah, some of my characters are getting staggered. Um, speed is fixed at a specific value each scene. Offensive dice skin plus two power against targets with slower speed. HP does not go below uh, one. When HP drops to one, go into a dormant state and awaken in three scenes with full HP and stagger resist. Offensive dice gain plus 50 power when clashing against offensive dice. Oh. Ha, huh. I guess I guess the purple tier is pretty good here. If that is the case, then purple tier is really good.
so... In punishment mode. I actually don't have like that's the problem. I don't have a pure defensive card except for purple tier. Gets rid of three. Um, there's no like the the way I killed the punishing bird in the uh. The abnormality punishing bird was with was just sustaining the damage, and then and then like just I just killed these uh, ads first, and then what did I do? Uh, and then I just and then. I think I some like it was something along the lines of just hitting hitting him somehow. Punishing mode. How do I get him to enter punishing mode and the thing is, the getting him to enter punish mode is good, is uh, easy, but dealing damage to him afterwards is not. This actually. That's the smack is bad. No, um... No, he has these... Counter dice. Oh, uh... I think... I can break this using range attacks? I can break the counter dice using range of the hacks. Oh shit, I have freaking internally lit lamp. That 
that was the eternally lit lamp it proves detriment to my cause here Okay, so the thing is, the freaking counter dice are the problem. Okay, I shouldn't... I shouldn't put the lamp on Bina. I mean, I'll try this. What? What? Shit. Oh, hey. Wait, 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 wait. There's rapid flutter. If there is this rapid flutters... There's a chance... I... Maybe... Does Cell have a innate counter dice? Maybe she does. Maybe she actually does and I didn't realize it. I think this is a very opportune time to target the bird here.
And I'll do this. Hey, let's see. Okay, staggered. Okay, small bird decided to punch the creature's wrongdoing with its beak. This is the punishing bird. As a third of the battle gain ten, gain ten marks of sin. On hit, transfer all oh, transfer a stack of mark of sin to the target. All dice gain power equal to the amount of mark of sin the target has. Starting with scene 1, all characters gain 1 mark. If, the, if a character has 5 or more marks, use judgment. If 3 or more characters have 3 plus marks, Yeah. Um These guys transfer sins as well. No, or not. Uh, yes. I don't. This is so. Uh, this is so very, very confusing. Sin is very...
sin stuff. Well, let's see what happens, but I don't think it's gonna be... Oh! Oh, see- What?! Oh, ceaseless judgment... ...counts their own you- What? That is BS! That is... That is so BS. What the fuck? Oh my god. Okay, I'm just gonna like try to beat him and then see what's next. Because I think I think the three birds after the, the three these three birds there isn't anything else. And I just want to see what is next. This guy is dead, this guy is dead. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go for it and see what is next. It's gonna be... It's gonna be something. I'm probably not gonna win here.
This just sucks, but whatever. Oh my... That was a lot of damage. Stagger. to see what is after this guy so so that's why I'm not uh, restarting but I know that I very much most likely have to restart Ah. What do you mean one stat? What is next? Long bird with his sins. Then in the middle of the the class, someone shouted, "The beast!" Holy! What the fuck is this? The monster in the black forest. This is three. Out of eight possible patterns over three scenes. The three birds. Every two scenes switch the active egg effect for apocalypse bird. The apocalypse bird's 
eggs cycle in the following order big eyes, small beak, long arms rodents resistances change depending on the currently active egg effect Every two scenes, switch the active egg effect for Apocalypse, Apocalypse Bird. Apocalypse Bird's egg cycle in the following order. No, I, I read that. Cracking, cracking's eggs. If staggered while well, the Apocalypse Bird's egg effect is active, the character will lose HP and the currently active egg effect will be permanently expired. At the start of the next scene, recover from stagger, purge all status elements, and gain 2 strength and endurance. Eternal Peace HP does, HP does not go below 75%? What? This pattern will not be used once Big Eyes effect ex expires. Uses designated combat pages. Target two librarians with the most heavy guilt. Targets are horrified next scene. What? Brilliant eyes. Target loses one light. Inflict one bind and paralysis. If target is defeated by this, replay on another target. Same thing. That is very. This is just insane. I mean, I can't do it with only. Of course, I can't do it with only three characters, three librarians here, but. I'm going to play one turn and see what is going on. What happens when... When two mass attacks, well, two mass attack pages targeting the same target, the same dice, I mean. Oh well, yeah.
This is just... Okay, it's insane. Alright, alright. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. I think the the reasonable Okay, well um yeah well I'll we'll have to try again but now that I know what to expect there is shouldn't be that bad. Um Yeah, I should use Bina to is like Yeah, um Losing Cell on the second bird it's quite bad. Wait, Cell doesn't have that counter dice? Passive counter dice? Hmm, anyways, yeah, I, I don't... I'm not sure, I'm not sure. But I think, um... Getting... The, getting the character pages from these two will probably help me with... Maybe will help me with uh, this fight here. Right now, I'm just suffering from not enough light generation. And then not enough card draw. Especially purple tier, I'm not sure exactly how to build the deck here. But I will see. Uh, I was like, yeah, I think it's fine. It's just. I think, especially, it's because I don't have that many will of the prescript. Anyways, I will, I will figure it out.